Great to have you all. Thank you for joining us. I'm Siobhan Sarna, your host. I am the founder of SIBO SOS, and I have known my very special guest, Stephen Wright, for a long time, long time, like, I don't know, six, seven years now. And Stephen has helped so many people with their gut health. He's an engineer by trade. He and I are friends. I love him very much, and he's super smart. He and you're thinking, well, why is he here talking about gut health and sleep and supplements? When Stephen was one of my first coaches, and um, he had a really extensive program online, SCD Lifestyle, helping people get their health back. He has his own personal story of gut health and overcoming so many things. He's also one of the most experimental people I know when it comes to health. So it's kind of cool because he does it first. Also, he swore to me he never wanted to create a supplement line, but was very frustrated because he couldn't find what he wanted. So fast forward a couple of years ago, he was like, fine. And he decided to make very specific, very specialized supplements. You don't have to buy them. It's totally cool. We have a special offer for you. Good, bad, and different. Do you. And sleep is one of our topics today. So that is so important, as we all know. I just read a study about how if you don't sleep well even one night, it can increase your, is this even possible, your chances for Alzheimer? I mean, it's crazy. Anyway, so let's talk to Stephen Wright about uh, sleep and um, how we can all get some, whether you have gut issues or not, whatever you got going on. It's so important. Hello, Stephen Wright. Hey, Siobhan. Thanks for having me. Always good to have you. Um, you're one of our most requested speakers. And so it's a pleasure to share this time with you in general, but also I like to deliver what the people want. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is great because this this area doesn't get enough uh, focus, I believe, because you know there's, there's things that we do every day that affect our health and it's hard to make changes on them because like, you know, for instance, if your house is moldy, it's really troublesome to get rid of it and move. It's a big bother. It's much easier to switch your diet, take some supplements. If your sleep sucks, it's much easier to switch your diet and take some supplements and exercise and do lots of tests than to finally figure out why your sleep sucks. And my sleep has sucked most of my life. And it's been a really, really long time of me trying to figure out how to sleep better. And I've been tracking my sleep way before Oura Ring. Like there was trackers way before Oura Ring. Uh, Zio was the first tractor I used, I believe in 2012. Uh, it was like this band, this giant thing you put on your headband that you had to wear at night. Um, and uh, I, my pattern was almost zero deep sleep and always good REM sleep um, and always having a hard time falling asleep and staying asleep. So that's my pattern. Everybody has their own sleep patterns. Um, but today, hopefully, my goal is to educate you about uh, if you're having poor sleep, what you can do about it, if you want better sleep than what you're getting, if you want better HRV numbers, which is heart rate variability, uh, what you can do about that, both um, techniques you can do without spending any money, just changing the way you live, and then things you could do now that we've figured out some cool stuff uh, through the gut using some supplements that have totally taken Shay, my wife's sleep from like really good to ex extraordinary on the Aura Ring app. And my sleep from like terrible to decent. We'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, my husband just had a sleep study. And if you all are not sleeping well, you do need to check into sleep apnea and get your PCP, your primary care physician to write you that script in the United States um, and get a sleep study. Your, in, your chances of getting the sleep study uh, approved by your insurance individual results will vary, will definitely increase if you get that prescription from your uh, primary care physician. Even if you have a dentist, a sleep dentist, help you with the sleep study and you want to get it covered, who wouldn't? So try that. And I've slept at the mall in strip malls twice when I've had my sleep study, super weird, um, very weird. Uh, but I, they now, a lot of the technology is you can do it at home. So just a side note. Yeah, those are super fun. I've done a few of those. Yeah, I'm super weird <laughs> in the mall, especially. Anyway, Stephen. So, what are some things that we can do? I mean, who here? Let's pop into the chat. Who yeah. here would like to improve their sleep? I mean, obviously. And what, and what are you struggling with? Is it staying yeah. asleep, falling asleep? Is it yeah. your deep sleep, your REM sleep? 
you know, feeling refreshed in the morning. There's so many variables here. Um, so, you know, getting a, a filter of like what the biggest issues are um, to be very helpful. Yeah, staying asleep, et cetera. You can read them, uh, Stephen. Okay. Um, the other thing is that, you know, there's sleep hygiene. Like you just told right. me about a great pillow and, um, you know, to have it be cool enough and to make sure that everything's dark in your room, et cetera. What are some tips that have helped you? Yeah, so let's let's talk about basic sleep hygiene to begin with. And I want to say right on hand that these things can improve your sleep. But if you're a tough case like I am, these things didn't do anything for my sleep. In fact, I was meticulous and military about these things. And then I would go to practitioners who specialized in sleep disturbances and the, the patterns on the, the trackers. And they would be like, you're doing all these things and your numbers are this bad. And I'd be like, yeah. So if you are part of the group like me who was already trying a bunch of this stuff and you're not seeing results, your sleep still sucks, please know you're not alone and there are ways to get better. If you've never tried any of this, maybe start here. And so some of those things are uh, black out all the lights. So get blackout curtains. Uh, if you have LEDs on certain chargers or certain devices, either flip them over, cover them with blankets, use duct tape to cover them up. So all the lights. Next thing is sound. So a lot of people have sound issues. I use earplugs. I started doing that when I worked uh, some shift work back when, in college. Um, but you know, some people listen to like the audible go to sleep programs. There's various, like there's actually cool new apps and sleep programs that are free on audible and other things. If you're already a prime member that are like these super boring stories that like they never end and they never start. And it's the weirdest thing ever. It doesn't work for me, but it works for some people. Um, so, so sound is a big thing. And then, like you said, temperature, for me, temperature is probably the biggest thing. Uh, so actually, no, that's not true. Sounds the biggest for me and temperature is number two. So most people need it to be cooler. And the reason why is that your body temperature actually drops uh, at least, well, it should drop around two degrees or so. And that's part of what um, signals a lot of hormones and a lot of uh, things to take over with your brain, some recharge. And so um, getting your body temperature to drop is really important. So to do that, uh, the thing that we do in our house and I battle with my wife, my wife uh, is runs very cold and I run very hot. And so if I had it my way, the temperature would be dropped way down, but instead we drop it um, about two degrees in the house when it's bedtime. But then I also have a, a chili pad or not a chili pad. I have the eight sleep. I've had the chili pad as well. Um, I currently use the eight sleep uh, in one of our bedrooms and I drop mine super cold and that actually chills me from like the mattress layer up. Uh, so that's helpful for me. Uh, and I think helpful for other people. I will say that you can kind of hack that with either hot or cold showers or, um, you know, soaks in a tub. So the prevailing idea is a really hot soak or a really hot shower. That's like the old uh, you know, wisdom from grandmother style that never really worked for me. I would get out and, and I would actually like still be really hot. Like it would keep me hotter than what I was. Cause my issue again, remember is dropping down in temperature. And so I actually did better with a cold shower, which doesn't make a lot of sense to most people, but I actually did better with a cold shower right before bed, which is, <laughs> you know, you're kind of winding down. You're like, Oh, I don't want to get in this super cold shower. This is terrible. It's hard yeah. enough in the morning, let alone before yeah. bed. So that was not a very sustainable habit for me. And so the, the chili plaid slash eight sleep helped me. Um, but I've actually kind of gotten past some of those things where I can sleep now without the, the chili pad. I've gotten better with some of the techniques we're going to talk about here in a bit. Uh, but that that's your basic sleep hygiene. Of course, please get off your phone if you can. Um, I'm terrible at it. I try to get off like 30 minutes before bed. I'm not the best at it. Um, the, the optimal life is like no screens for the last hour before bed, but I, I'm not going to try to say that I'm good at that. I don't do that at all. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, definitely tricky. Okay. So if you, if you haven't done, tried all that sort of first line therapies, you definitely want to do that. And I also find that just sometimes a little bit of a podcast, like you were saying, like this random story, but like a little bit I'm not totally interested in, but vaguely interested in if I'm in a worry mode, it will just take my mind off the worry. 
I've also seen like headbands that which you know have like Bluetooth in them, which I'm really not into because I don't think it's great for your brain. On the other hand, not sleeping isn't great for your brain. So you know, use yeah. your best judgment. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, my wife loves the podcast idea as well. My brain doesn't work that way. I have a hypervigilant brain. And so once I start thinking, I can't stop thinking. So yeah. introducing any new ideas to me before bed is the worst thing in the world because of, of, you know, one of my biggest issues is when I close my eyes, I actually think more like I have done a lot of QEEG. I've done a lot of neurofeedback and my brain waves are more excitable when my eyes are closed, which is not what you want. Um, so what I think you should take away from what Siobhan just shared and what I just shared is that there's no right way to do this. There's no perfect way. I don't give a, uh, you know, bad word, bad word, bad word. What other people say online, I don't care how good of a sleep expert they quote unquote are. I know these people. I've seen them at masterminds. I've seen them with alcohol. I've seen them with their phones. I've seen them with their blue light. They don't follow any perfect plan either. So there's no perfect way to do sleep hygiene. There is certain things you should maybe try depending on your brain and your home life, you know, like dogs in the bed or, you know, uh, animals in the bed. If you cannot do that, it's probably going to be better for your sleep. But if you have young kids, like, don't beat yourself up. It's just, it is what it is. It's going to happen. One of the number one things disrupting people's sleep is animals, their pets. Here's Petunia, and she has walrus whiskers, as you might see. And she'll just get really close to me, and those whiskers and her otter breath will just like wake, and then she starts to eat my hair. So it's a whole thing. So yeah, I love her. I take the hit. Anyway, so those are some things. Okay, very good. Very good. So, so there are other things that, you know, depending on what your issue is with sleep, like I said, going to sleep, staying asleep. Um, you know, the quality, the rhythm of your sleep, because ideal sleep is somewhere around five to seven patterns where you drop into re really, really deep sleep first, and then you kind of do some REM and deep sleep patterns throughout the night. These are different cleansing waves and different sleep waves. The old adage that the more hours you get before midnight, they kind of matter twice as much as the sleep you get after midnight. There is some, you know, there's some credence to that. There's some, there's something into that, but again, there's no, there's no right way to do this. There's just like uh, zones to try to aim for. And so if you can get to bed before midnight, a couple hours before midnight, stay in a similar time throughout the weekend, that's also very helpful. Get sunlight in your eye. The first thing you get up in the morning, that's probably as big of a deal as some of these other things. Like um, if you can get no sunglasses, no contacts, no glasses, go outside, even five minutes of, you know, and I'm not saying look into the sun, like <laughs> just be outside because the, the luminescence, the, the, the intensity of the light and the spectrum of the light is so much greater than anything we can produce uh, man Wade at this moment in time. It's still better five minutes outside uh, even this great time to walk your dogs. Don't take your sunglasses. Don't take your contacts. Uh, obviously, unless you're blind then try not that part, but, um, <laughs> but that, that setting that the circadian rhythm and that part is, is super beneficial. Um, and if you're doing those things and your sleep is still disrupted, it's still sucking. Um, I want to let you know that that was me. <laughs> and I also meditated and I also exercise every day. And I also went to therapy and I also did neurofeedback and I also still sucked. And so, um, there's hope if you're like me. Okay, so what moved the needle for you? So there was several there was several phases that moved the needle for me. Um, one of those phases was uh, getting my butyrate levels supported. So there is several sleep studies on rats and mice in which they give them supplemental butyrate, which is a short chain fatty acid that's made in the gut. It's the most prevalent. Uh, short chain fatty acid made in the gut. It's used by all kinds of things in the gut. Uh, it's the predominant metabolism for colonocytes, but it also goes systemic and it, it's kind of like a magnesium that's used by almost every area of the body, including the brain. And so uh, there's three or four studies now uh, showing that uh, when you give butyrate for even sleep disrupted uh, people, or not people, excuse me, for mice, it helps them with their sleep. So this is, uh, I'm gonna share my screen real quick. This is the most recent one right here. 
Uh, this was 2023. It just came out here that they just re repeated it. And now they're starting to do uh, butyrate studies for uh, the humans. So it's kind of like they're just beginning it um, to transfer it. But we have seen in our, uh, in our testimonials, in our feedback group from our the people who take our tributarin X, that they can see sometimes going from 20 minutes of deep sleep a night to 40 minutes, or going from 40 minutes to 80 minutes. Um, it's not everybody, but if you even get 15 minutes more of deep sleep per night, you will know, you will feel that non-REM deep sleep is what it's called. It's, it's extremely important for what you were mentioning at the beginning of the show around um, avoiding neurodegenerative diseases later in life. There is a strong correlation, again, no causation, but strong correlation between disrupted sleep and low non-REM deep sleep um, and neurodegenerative diseases. So you want to get that number a minimum of 60 minutes, um, somewhere between 60 and 120. Again, there's no perfect number for anyone. Um, there's just rhythms and how you feel. And so a lot of people who are struggling with low deep sleep scores can take supplemental butyrates before bed and see boosts in those uh, scores, which is super cool. And it's it's one of the biggest things that moved the needle for me. And I was stuck around 10 to 12 minutes a night for and, and five how, years. How, and everybody's different. And also one night could be different than another night. So we're just talking about Stephen's experiences. I do want to show you the butyrate that Stephen and his company have created because I know like uh, Irene has to go or has already left. So I just want to show you that, Stephen, if you can pull that up. And Clarissa, can you pop the link? So Stephen's given our audience uh, $15 off in free shipping and handling. If you're out of the U.S., they do ship internationally. The shipping and handling is not free, um, but you do get the $15 off. And it's there's a special healthy gut sleep bundle. We've never done bundles before. And this is just for you, my community. No one else has it. This is the lowest price ever. Can you just pull up the page, Steve, so, and share screen so we can just show you? And we're going to yeah. get back to the topic at hand. But I just wanted to, for those of you who have to leave, um, get this to you. Plus, I love saving money. Yeah. So we'll. So this has never been done before. This was, you know, this is directly for for the CBO SOS group. Um, I will guarantee that you will see an improvement in your HRV numbers and your deep and REM sleep, like either one of them. Or we'll give you your money back. Whoa. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that. That's that's how cool. That's uh, it's cool. not going to work for everybody as well. I guarantee that, yeah. you know, three to 5% of people I would give you their money back on. But this helped me go from a terrible sleeper who is doing everything correct to a decent sleeper. And for me, that feels pretty amazing. Like, I don't really know what it's like to get over a 90 on your aura ring on a regular basis, but... Um, Shay, my wife went from eighties to nineties and she's like, you know, gets all crowns and superstars and every tracker app there is out there. I don't know what that life is like. Um, I might be able to be Spider-Man or something if I got to that level. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> but this is a three-step process. There's uh, at the bottom of the page, there's some dosing stuff down here. We'll walk through this later, but if you're leaving now, just know that the majority of people are at the regular level, which this is this is over a 30-day supply. Uh, if you're at the regular level, I take tough case level one, unless it's been a really bad day, then I'll try number, number two. Um, but most people will see an increase in their HRV and deep sleep and REM sleep um, at the level one, if they even try it for, for five to seven days. But a lot of people, if you're just kind of like new to this, or you've tried a few things, like this is all you'll need is the regular level. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. I, I, anybody who's putting a question in the chat, please put it in the Q and a, thank you. All right. So the link is in the chat. Let's get back to some of these. Uh, I want to ask you a couple of questions if I may. Yeah. Um, Helene, hey Helene, if any time, oh, if do we have any time to address gut health and skin issues, have had very itchy dermatitis. Okay, so that's, uh, I don't think I have sleep apnea. Right, I'm gonna, we're gonna turn this into a sleep question. Okay, gut and skin, definitely related. Dermatitis, four months, definitely sleep is an issue. Don't think I have sleep apnea. Also do have MS, Hashimoto, hypothyroidism, osteoporosis. I've been on a healthy paleo diet for many years. Definitely wish for better sleep. One thing I just want to say to you is a lesson I had to be very, very humble about. My husband, the lovely David, 
recorded me sleeping. And I thought that he had downloaded a sound effect of <laughs> some snoring. But it was little old me with my Ehlers Danlos, which is the laxity and the collagen, and the skin, with talking nonstop for 24 years and very tight through here, small palate. And um, that was rest and mold exposure, which leads to inflammation, especially in the nasal passages. That led to me being um, basically, you know, sawing. That's our nickname for snoring. Like, it was loud. And I was so in denial. I was like, that is not true. I'm little. I'm a girl. Whatever I, whatever BS I was making up as to why it wasn't me and, and the cynicism that I tend to have. Uh, he's like, listen, I love you, but I'm telling you. <laughs> and so he recorded me. Anyway, if you don't think you have sleep apnea, I do want you to seriously consider it. Um, so Stephen, talk to me about this and what is the that combination helene you might want to try this combination he's guaranteeing it i mean yeah. that's so so again if you if you read through the chat here we have all kinds of people with all kinds of issues people waking up at 2 to 3 a.m thinking it's histamine it could be they might think it's hypoglycemia it could be uh, people can't fall asleep people wake up five times six times a night so like the number of variables is wide and this is not, I don't, I'm not your functional medicine doctor. I don't have access to your health history. So this is not, you know, a one-to-one -one relationship and I can't build products like that. But what I can try to do is cover a spectrum. And so the cool thing is that um, for some of us, some, some people, um, we have what's called hypervigilance. You can look that up. It's basically a, a brain state. Typically, uh, if you have anxiety, uh, you will be in a hypervigilant brain state. And so um, if you have this, there's certain compounds that are gonna work better for you than somebody who does not have hypervigilance. Again, not everybody has it, but I do. And so for instance, magnesium glycinate works extremely well for me, as well as the B serene herbs that help sort of just like wind down my cortisol. They, they, they modify the brain waves a little bit through the brain sensors and they help take the edge off my hypervigilance. Um, so that's really key. Uh, the glycine in our magnesium, not every, ours is a bisglycinate. That means two glycine molecules for every one magnesium molecule. So not everybody has that compound. They have different types of glycinates. There could be one glycine to one magnesium, but two capsules of our magnesium product is 1,440 milligrams of glycine. There's been numerous repeated studies in humans for three, glam, three grams of glycine uh, per, uh, per night right here. And uh, I just pulled this up because this is one of the newer ones in 2015, but you can see down here when they start to talk through it, um, they're using three grams a day for uh, improved sleep quality, reduces sleepiness, fatigue the next day, um, insom insomniac tendencies and restricted sleep. So um, basically magnesium and glycine together help with REM, low REM numbers. You want to be doing glycine and you want to have some magnesium. Um, people who are really troubled, you want to try to get to that three, three I can't say grams today, three, uh, three grams a day. Uh, two of our magnesium gets you halfway there. You could take another two, which is why the, you know, the super dose or whatever for the tough case is four a day uh, or four per night. That gets you enough magnesium and enough glycine to, you know, really feel it, it should really calm you down. And so, so magnesium helps calm the brain down. Glycine helps calm the brain down. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of sleep magnesiums out there, citrates, uh, you know, multi-form magnesiums. And I'm telling you that I've tried them all and bisglycinate is the preferred method for troublesome sleepers like myself. And it's backed by this glycine research, as well as some of the magnesium data that you can get uh, through to the brain. So I know that there's, you know, the brain specific magnesiums out there. Um, you might like those. I'm just telling you what, what is best for, in my opinion, for sleep. Um, is glycine identical to magnesium glycinate? So, uh, so yes and no. So magnesium glycinate could be bisglycinate or glycinate. So 
Uh, ours is bisglycinate. So two glycine molecules, one magnesium molecule together. Okay. If you look at the back of your bottle, it says magnesium, uh, just glycinate. It's one glycine to one magnesium. So you get more bang for your buck with the glycine uh, using a bisglycinate product, which a lot of them are. Okay. Uh, how much is the bundle, Stephen? So, uh, Sherry's asking. Uh, it's one. I don't know why the price isn't showing up right now. I'm just going to add it to my cart. Guys, click, click the link and poke around yeah. there. It's, 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 it's under, more. it's right around 120 bucks or something. Okay. Um, and then with the coupon, you get, you get it down, right? So you get the $15 off and free shipping. So it's one, uh, 142 plus the $15 off. It, it gets, gets you down to 130, just under 125. Okay, Arissa, hi Arissa. Question: Is this like taking melatonin as far as changing how your body produces the hormone, or and or or and if not, how does this work? What is the mechanism? Yeah, so so let's run through it. So um, so butyrate is going to help your brain relax and get into more deep sleep numbers and deep sleep stages. So if you don't have enough butyrate coming from your gut into your brain, your deep sleep numbers are probably going to suck and, or they could be better if they're not totally sucking and sucking is like less than 40 minutes a night. You want to be more than that. Uh, most of my life that I've tracked, I was always less than 30. So I, that that's a hard life to live. I've been there. Um, next you have REM sleep and REM sleep numbers. Uh, if you want to boost your REM sleep, glycine is a big thing. You can just buy bulk glycine on Amazon. If you want, just try three to five grams a night. Um, typically it works better with magnesium, which is why the magnesium HP product is included in the bundle. Um, so for REM and for winding down, you're going to want magnesium and then glycine. And then a lot of people have, uh, this hypervigilance slash disrupted cortisol pathways, and they could use some adrenal support. Those are all basically adrenal or nervous system. And, and I, this, there's a lot of like ad adrenal stuff right now. Uh, I love the people, they're my friends who are talking about adrenals. I think it might be better to think about the whole adrenal thing as a nervous system thing. So a lot of the herbs that support the adrenals are also supporting your parasympathetic tone, which is why I'm saying the HRV numbers are going to go up. I don't know how much they'll go up. They only might go up three or four points. They might go up 10 or 20 points. But HRV is sort of a metric you can track to tell you about your vagal tone, your parasympathetic tone, and your adrenal tone. And so there's herbs in the B serene, the malungu, um, the uh, the holy basil, the the remina. They all help sort of tonify your capacity to be with stress and have better HRV and better, better par parasympathetic, which is very helpful for people as they're trying to wind down and just let go of the day. Let go of the fact that there's a thousand things to do tomorrow. Let go of the fact that something scary could happen any any moment. And so they all, that's why it's a bundle. They all kind of work together. Right. So he's never done the bundle before, but uh, this was like a special project that he and I are doing for our community. So, and it's only here, you're here. There's a very small group that has access to this because if he did it like globally, it wouldn't work for the business, but I appreciate you all showing up. If you have any questions, put them into the Q and A box. Um, okay. So uh, go ahead. I just want to hammer a few more things. Okay. okay. Number one, some people could have hypoglycemia. This bundle will not help you with that. Take a tablespoon of honey before bed. It's one of the coolest studied things. Try it. Try raw honey before bed, a tablespoon. Try it for four nights, five nights in a row. Don't test anything for just one or two nights. You can't make any determination after one or two nights. You have to, you have to push through the pain, do three to five nights. If if you don't notice anything after five nights. Uh, then it's probably not hypoglycemia. Some people think they have histamine issues at two to three in the morning. I know that there's the possibility. There's a rhythm there. It's possible. But just because it's possible doesn't mean it's happening for you. So if it's if it's you, then take two DAO enzymes, like double the dose of DAO right before bed and see if it works. For some people, it's a game changer. Um, I mean, give it a shot. Try it for five nights. Uh, hypoglycemia, I also do a little bit of protein right before I go to sleep. That really helped me. Yeah. Yeah. It's another great one. Yeah. Um, were you going to hammer some more things? Uh, those are the two I just saw in the chat. So okay. does your body adapt to these herbs? Do they stop working after prolonged use? 
Not that I'm aware of. No, yeah. these are herbs from the Ayurvedic tradition mostly. Um, and so they've been used for centuries and we have no, you know, recorded history yet that there's like a, a rebound effect or a bad effect. Clara is saying, my problem is restlessness, finding comfortable positions, constantly tossing. If you do have SIBO, because a couple of people are saying that you do have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, it is um, often associated with restless leg syndrome. So I know that can be disruptive, but also how's your fascia? Do you have pain in your body? What's your pillow like? You know, back to some of those sleep hygiene things. But also I find if I have pain in my body, sleep is just like relief, but it's also really hard to get. So Clara, I'm just asking you some questions about that. How would one know if they would best benefit from magnesium glycinate versus magnesium bisglycinate? And it is true that, is it true that magnesium threonate is the only mag that crosses the blood brain barrier? So the data that we have so far suggests magnesium threonate crosses the blood brain barrier, but that doesn't mean that it improves sleep. The people like think of it more like a nootropic, not as a sleep mm. magnesium. Like, and the other thing that I've, I've, I've used three and eight on and off for over 10 years. It's been around a long time. If it was so special, everybody would know about it. I, I'm not saying like, if you just found out about it, no offense, I've known about it for 10 years. It's been around and they would have done more studies on it and they haven't. I find you don't even have to take the glycinate that, that we use, but I find that glycinate with the glycine in the magnesium seems to be more supportive of relaxing the nervous system and getting better sleep. So I would, I would wager to say the best use. Keep going. Excuse me. I, this is a doctor's appointment that I got to grab. I'll be right back. Okay. So I would wager to say the best use of magnesium three and eight is actually in the morning when you're trying to get into like your, your, your best brain waves and have the most energy and then a glycinate or a biz glycinate before bed is going to be your best sleep magnesium. And again, um, the difference between glycinate and biz glycinate, you'll see it on the back of the label. Um, I wish I had a bottle here. I don't have a bottle in front of me. Um, but in the supplement facts, it'll say glycinate or bis glycinate. If it's bis glycinate, that means by, it means two molecules of glycine, one molecule of magnesium. So um, I guess those are the differences there. And I think magnesium 3 and 8 is really cool. I just think it's potentially better uh, in the morning more as a, as a nootropic than it is for sleep. But some people love it. And if you love it, then um, I think hopefully what you took away from the beginning of this talk is that my sleep was so terrible, like so terrible for so long. I'm talking less than 20 minutes of deep sleep. Um, like I'll be in bed for eight to nine hours, but only have actual sleep recorded time of like six hours. So that means I'm up all the time. I'm tossing and turning. Those are terrible numbers. You could take that to any doctor, any healthcare practitioner of any type. And they'll be like, Ooh, that's not, that's not great, man. Um, so I don't want to say that my way is the way for you. I'm just trying to say that I've tested a lot of things in effort to improve those numbers. Now I'm like around an hour to an hour and 30 minutes a deep. My REM numbers have always been, been high 90 minutes to, to two hours plus. Um, and now I wake up a lot less. So that that's all I'm trying to say here. Um, I've tried the Bluetooth thing. I've tried the Wi-Fi thing. Uh, I don't, the aura ring doesn't, you know, you can put it on a uh, non-transmitting mode and the sleep pad I use doesn't have Bluetooth on it. So I don't use any Bluetooth technologies when I sleep. I'm also with Siobhan. I'm not uh, excited about Bluetooth on my brain. Um, so I'm not, I'm not into those types of technologies, uh, but I'm also not turning off my Wi-Fi in the entire home when I sleep. And I, nor do I believe that uh, that is the core issue for most folks. Now, I'm not saying some people aren't uh, reacting to it. I'm sure they are, um, but it's just not uh, not the thing for me. Um, so, um, okay. So, I guess I want to. I'm going to go take a look at the Q and A while Siobhan's gone here. Um, I do want to mention. Uh, so. If you are in uh, the group of people who are uh, like tossing and turning a lot. So there are a number of things you can do from a positional standpoint in your sleep that may affect you. Um, your mattresses can matter. The sheets you're on could matter. Um, 
the uh, the type of pillow you use. So I'm currently testing something called the neck nest. Um, I think Siobhan's testing it as well. Uh, I can't do it for the full night. Wow. And uh, I hope that maybe in six months, I'll be able to do it for the full night. But there's, there's this guy that I met, this doctor that I met, uh, who has some decent data that suggests maybe sleeping on your back is actually better than the studies that were sleeping on your slide. And so I'm exploring that stuff right now. I'm constantly testing. I'm constantly trying to improve. Um, before I dive into the the questions, um, thanks, Paul. I don't, I don't I don't care about my Wi-Fi. I'm not going to live in a bubble the rest of my life. So I love that you do, and I love that everybody else can turn off their Wi-Fi. But I'm not going to turn it off. Um, so there is a CBT technique I learned that is very helpful for me when my brain is racing. Okay, so people who uh, lay down to bed, you've done everything right. You've exercised. You've you've gotten the sunlight in your eyes. You've taken the sleep bundle. You've you've done a cold or a hot shower, and you're still not there. Um, there's two things I've learned. One was from Dr. Peter, um, who taught me that uh, you should think about the past to try to go to bed versus thinking about the future. So you can try to remember things. I and love like, that. Yeah. Think about the past to try to fall asleep. And then the other thing is a CBT technique that gets you out of your brain into your body. So, um, if you can do this, can you do the Spock sign? Not well. Not okay. Well. It makes it much harder, but you take two fingers, uh, you wrap them through like this and then you wrap your thumb. So I don't know if people can see that. It's kind of weird to figure it out sometimes. Mudra. Yeah. So now what you do is you just lay down and squeeze one side and squeeze the other side. So you just go one back and forth. So that's going to help you get into your body parasympathetic. And if you're having anxiety, like you're, you're literally having anxiety, Dr. Uh, Huberman, if you haven't heard of him, he's pretty cool. He does some really cool, good stuff. Um, he taught me a breathing technique that is also very helpful that I will repeat like four or five times as I go to bed, if I'm really worked up. And that is a double nasal inhale. So you go, so it's, you, you're breathing in like 90%, like as much as you can do, and then adding just a little bit more air in through your nose. So it's, and then you let it out through the mouth. And it's basically taking all the carbon dioxide out of your lungs and sending it out and sends a, extreme signal to your your vagal and your, your parasympathetic nervous system to calm down. So if you repeat that like three to five times, you can do it during the day even if you're if you're worked up. And this is also what I do in the dental chair. Uh, Siobhan and I talk about getting our, our dental work done and how uh, intense it is. And yeah. so when I'm getting worked on and I'm freaking out because they're drilling into my face is I, I do this on the dental chair to keep my brain from, you know, making up crazy freaking visualization. Out. Yeah. Okay, is this it, Steve? So we open the palm, we put the two fingers there, grab yep. it, and then you the, gotta put your, goes, yep. the thumb goes in the little nest of the other hand. Yep. And then you Whoa. just and then yep. you just squeeze, squeeze. Squeeze from the top squeeze. and then squeeze from the bottom, like press up. You're just squeeze in the, the right. So squeeze your right side, squeeze your thumb. Oh, oh, left yep. to right. All, okay. all, yeah, yeah. It keeps your brain. You can't really think while you're doing it. That is crazy. Yeah. You guys have to try it. So you're doing this? <laughs> what is happening to me? Ah, that is awesome. It's that a cognitive awesome. behavioral behavioral therapy uh, exercise that I learned in one of the sleep CBT courses. Wow. Um, so the the breathing thing, the the CBT uh, physical technique, um, that stuff can really help you if you're in the uh, nervous system. Uh, people, yeah, tapping. If you're a tapper, those can be awesome as well. Um, the breathing is also how I float when swimming. Oh, interesting. I'll have to try that. Um, so those are some of the, the the various steps you can do if you've never tr if you've already tried a lot of the other stuff. You tried the blackouts. You've tried the the noise machines or the earplugs. Some people love a fan or a noise machine. Right. Um, that's also a great idea. Um, you know. Yeah. So should we jump into some Q and A or what's, yeah. what's going on? Yeah. Um, so whoever copied that and you're like, Oh my God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to copy that. Oh my gosh. Uh, no problem. Um, okay. You don't need the YouTube showing the hand squeeze thing, Lena. It's just like two fingers, like peace, but close them, wrap it. And then thumb goes in the nest of the yep. other hand and it's back and forth, left and right, left and right. Okay. Uh, one thing, if you do get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, try to have that light in the bathroom not super bright. Like, 
they have tons of things on Amazon for like low light or yeah. you know, ambient light, which hopefully you don't have too much of, um, because that can like wake you back up. Okay. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I had, uh, oh, got it. Carol, welcome. Glad you're here. Check out the link with the bundle that Stephen's talking about. And I know you came in late. No problem. We're going to send a replay, but I had a lot of really good advice in the beginning. So I'm glad you're here. Um, what, what, what is better for brain healing and concussions? I heard three is, I think it's that, that magnesium that crosses the blood brain barrier. I mean, there's no, there's no science has ever been done on that. So, I mean, if you were really concerned and you had the means to do it, I would take both take three and eight and bisglycinate. Cause again, I've looked at all the research on, on magnesium and there's no conclusion about bioavailability. In fact, they're, they're all bioavailability around the same percentage, which is kind of crazy. Cause there's a lot of claims and marketing crap out there. Um, but what might be more interesting is the fact that uh, like in a concussion situation, your nerve, your, your sympathetic nervous system is probably pretty triggered and you want to rebuild your HRV and your parasympathetic tone, but also the three and eight crossing the blood brain barrier, whatever that three and eight molecule is, maybe you're low in the brain and maybe it can help with the inflammation. I don't know. I don't think they've studied it either. Um, but you know, if you're, if you're dealing with that and you're, you're trying to throw ideas at it, doing both is not a bad thing. There was a study that just came out um, showing that people who took over the recommended daily allowance, so the RDA is set by uh, the FDA, um, they took 500 milligrams of magnesium per day and their brains aged much better than people who took the recommended daily amount, which is around four something. Uh, depends on men and women, it's different for men and women. So, so taking 500 to 550 milligrams of magnesium might be better and more optimal for aging and neurodegeneration than the RDA. Okay. Um, I've got this, this very specific question about butyrate constipation. So some people are concerned about constipation and butyrate. Mm -hmm. Could you explain what we need to do with that and how to titrate? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what we've seen uh, with our tributarin X, I can't speak to other people's butyrate supplements. I can only speak to our tributarin X is that people who are very constipated, I mean, uh, these people are have enemas on hand, they might have to use them once a week, they are using, you know, some magnesiums or vitamin C's or, or uh, herbal laxatives. Um, they can do one pill every three days, and they might need to titrate up one extra magnesium pill per day. And then after about two weeks, they can go to one pill every two days, and they're still the same. And then they can go to one pill every other day, about two weeks later. And then um, two weeks later, so we're at week eight now, uh, or no, two, four, six. Eight. Yeah, we're at week eight now. They're doing one every day. So you could do one you know, before bed every night now. And their, their stools are the same. And then something happens typically around week 10 to week 12, where they're, I believe their metabolism is changing inside of their gut. And they're actually switching from a glucose metabolism to a butyrate metabolism. And they literally can start like going down on their laxatives. They might start taking more tributarin X. They, they're having like spontaneous bowel movements that they don't normally have. And it's happened enough, like a like hundred plus times now, I think, that it's, it's repeatable. It's not going to work for everybody. And right. some people, like in the beginning, the reason why I'm saying spreading it out is that it can slow you down. It is motility- activator. And so it can slow you down even more, which is why having vitamin C, magnesium, you know, triphelia, whatever you use for constipation, you might need to increase that for a little bit. But typically what we find is that if you can modulate that with a supportive herb or a supportive uh, vitamin or, or mineral, then you can get through that phase and switch your metabolism back over and handle a lot more butyrate. Okay. Um, Let's see. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Okay. How much deep sleep should we get every night? Wake up to wake up feeling good. Is there, is there a range or is everybody different? And do we need a code, a coupon code, SIBO SOS? Yeah, SIBO SOS. Sorry, yeah. I didn't say that before. So you have to use the coupon code, right? We used to have it where the coupon was included at checkout, like automatically, and that confused people. 
and now I'm confused. We switched it and now it's more literal. Well, the, bu the bundle tech wouldn't allow us. So <laughs> got it. That's fine. We should move to using SIBO SOS as the coupon anyway. So um, use that link. You'll get the $15 off free shipping in the US and then use code SIBO SOS. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. Cindy says she has to think of nothing at all. I would just keep experimenting with visuals. Um, what's the maximum one time and total daily use of each of the magnesiums or whichever one you want to speak to? What do you mean? Maximum, maximum one time use, like, so how many capsules can you take in one time or whatever that dosage is? I mean, I, I don't, don't know what the lethal dose, I don't know what the LD50 of magnesium is. It's got to be very high because you'll have, you'll have diarrhea before. Yeah. Uh, what's the dose of magnesium for children you recommend that can't sleep? Uh, magnesium glycinate, again, is typically the safest, uh, especially for stomachs that are very sensitive like mine. Um, it's it's the most well tolerated. That's why we chose it. The glycine and the whole sleep thing happened to be just a benefit that we learned about later. Um, I'm not that intelligent. <laughs> it was mostly guy. just about gut first. Um uh yeah. Okay. Does it matter what time of day you take the magnesium for sleep? Yes. Yes. Many yeah. say at bedtime, but vitamins are better absorbed with food. And I heard it's more about increasing the total magnesium in your body, not time of day. Lena, I'm just going to say time of day, girl. That is a time of day situation. I've taken it in the middle of the day and I was like, I have got to go lie down. And my dear, dear friend, uh, who was like, she was constantly saying how tired she was. She went to the doctor. I'm so fatigued. I'm so tired. And it took me months because I was just trying to help her brainstorm. I'm like, let me just see the supplements you're taking. She's taking freaking magnesium in the morning. No wonder she was tired. This, it, she switched and she's fine. So I definitely think time of day is a factor. Um, let's see. Yes, the max dose per one sitting in the total daily consumption of the magnesium until it starts to become dangerous, which you've talked about that you're not sure, or just counterproductive. You'll have that diarrhea. Yeah, you'll start to have diarrhea. I mean, you can get your magnesium RBC and your magnesium serum levels. If they both start to get like, you know, a deviation above the nan the standard, then you can get a hyper -magne magnesia, I believe is how they say it. Um, and I got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But okay. it's it's typically a lot, like a thousand to three thousand, you know, a day. But uh, you know, don't quote me on that. I'm not that's not that's not advice. Okay. Anne says, help, Aura, Aura Ring says over two hours of deep and REM each night, average 7.5 hours per night, but my body does not produce butyrate, as the stool test shows, none, but vegan and ferments every day. So would you be an, I mean, uh, I don't, for she... taking uh, tributyrin X? I, I would say so. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're trying to rebuild your butyrate stores, I think we've talked about this before, yeah. but typically how you do that is, is you take supplemental butyrate like tributyrin X. And as you switch your, your gut to butyrate metabolism, then you add in prebiotics and, and fermentable substrates like resistant starch or vegetables. Um, polyphenols tend to be some of the best things as well as resistant starch. And so typically you do supplemental butyrate. Like if you have a low, if you have a low stool test for butyrate, just taking tributyrin X will likely not get you above into the good range, okay? You're going to need to start there so you can tolerate the polyphenols and the starches that will get you to where you want to get to. Um, and I think a lot of people are are not understanding that conception. Okay. Is Hawaii included in the free shipping? Uh, I don't believe so. I don't know. Support okay. at Healthy Gut. Well, my team will help you. Okay. Um, all right. The lower 48 only, I believe. Yeah. Sorry if I didn't say that. Somebody's had a stool test that is showing high butyrate. Should they, could they take tributyrin X? Um, I would say that you'd have to match that with symptoms. So if you had loose stools, if you have food sensitivities, leaky gut signs, uh, skin disruptions, brain fog, that then you probably could still try it. Um, but, um, yeah, I guess I'd want to repeat that test, make sure it's true. And, and you'd have to know a lot more about someone's health history to make sense of that in conjunction with actually trying to get what you want. Like if, like the person said they had two hours of RAM and two hours of deep, like that's fantastic numbers, 7.5 hour, 7 hours of sleep with two 
uh, two hours of REM, two hours of deep is fantastic. If you don't feel rested in the morning, that's really curious. Like there's some more digging to, to go into there. You know, that's when I'm definitely starting to think about environmental concerns with the mattresses or the mold or something else. Okay. Um, right. So Joan, that was for you. Greetings from Germany. I love your work. We love you. Thank you for being here. Um, is there any way to test if your butyrate is low other than a stool test? That's that's the most accepted way. It's obviously not the best way, uh, but I don't know when we're going to get the best way because that's like the, your body absorbs the majority of the butyrate and uses it for the colonocytes. And then 10% or so goes systemic to your brain, to your bones, to all kinds of cells, uh, your lungs as well. There's, there's information on like asthma and butyrate. Um, so the stool is what's left over, right? It's like, and, and so there's like a theory that like, let's say you make a hundred units and we find five in your stool, that means 95 got used, but that's all theory. We don't know that yet. And so um, I think stool testing for butyrate right now is the only thing we have, but I don't think it means like, like if everything else is going well in your life and you're, you have low butyrate, like, I don't know that, I don't know that you should get too worked up about it yet. Okay. Um, do you take it near food? Do you take these three supplements together? Um, some Rebecca saying somewhere she heard that magnesium needs to be taken away from other supplements and food. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm advocating that you take these about 60 minutes before bed. You can take them with food if you want, but um, most people eat around like six or seven and go to bed between like eight and nine. So, you know, I'm saying you could wait a little bit longer. The B serene, you can start taking that whenever you want to start lowering your cortisol. So start at noon, you could take one or two, you could take another one or two before bed. Um, magnesium, there's people, actually, I think you did it, Siobhan. I think we're at a conference and Siobhan was like, I'm just feeling a lot of feels right now. I'm a little too activated. She's like, oh. do you have any of that magnesium in your bag? Yeah. And you know, she, charm. yeah, so you can use it if you're an anxious person with hypervigilance like myself and you're, you need some support, you can use magnesium glycinate whenever. Um, the same thing with Tributer Nex, uh, you can take it whenever you can take it with food or without food. It's got the enteric capsule, so it doesn't matter when you take it. Um, but this talk was specifically about sleep and maximizing sleep. So if you want to maximize deep sleep numbers, you're going to want to take that closer to sleep time. Okay. If you're in Europe, he does ship there. It's not free shipping, but you do get uh, the discount. Use coupon code SIBO SOS and um, the bundle is additionally discounted 10%. So that's super cool. Um, okay. I anonymous who's asking about a serious medical situation recently uh, about the appropriate type of magnesium. I'm nervous to answer your question. So I'm, that makes me nervous. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. We got a book suggestion for you in there, Steve Mould. So thank you. Okay. I'm going to just text. Do you see this question? The bottom question there in the Q and a box, just keep that one sure. to yourself until you feel comfy. Um, okay. Stephen's going to answer you directly. Sherry, we have mold issues still in our house. Is the bundle going to work? Well, I had mold in a building for 24 years and the bundle has worked for me. It's in, I still have high mycotoxins in my body. Um, I'm getting the, this location tested for mold, second mold inspection. You got to have a good one. Um, so I'm going to, from my experience, it does still work because I still have mold floating around my body or the mycotoxin. So like, would you be able to clear SIBO easily, Sherry? The answer to that is probably no, but would you probably get a better night's sleep by using some of these things? I'm not a doctor. Individual results will vary. This isn't medical advice, but I, I do. I'm just going to tell you my personal experience. Okay. And we have five minutes left. <clears throat> When should we take more magnesium or magnesium? Yeah, besides to help sleep, constipation for brain healing. Does glyphosate pesticide chelate magnesium out of your body like it does molybdenum? That's a very complex, excellent question. So I'm not sure, Steve, if you're up for that one. Um, I'm not a glyphosate expert uh, and I don't know if magnesium chelates okay. it or takes it away. Um, it's not my, okay. it's my thing. 
Um, let's see, uh, Nia, I have no problem falling asleep or staying asleep. Cool. My problem is not enough to sleep due to erratic circadian rhythm sleep pattern, upside down sleep pattern, staying up most of the night and not going to bed until anywhere from three to six and sleeping until 10 or 11, sometimes with a short sleep interlude, like on the couch, anywhere between 11 and three. Nia, I did an overnight shift for six freaking years. I drove an hour. I put on full makeup hair and shoes, high heels, went out there, full tilt, high performance. Like the skeleton crew was so weird. Like I was just talking for three hours, selling stuff. And then I'd like go into the, you know, lobby and like, no one's there. I felt like no one was watching. It was a very weird lifetime ago, but um, that made me come to learn about owls and larks. There's a whole book about it. I can't remember the name of it, but larks are morning people and owls are night people. So my best friend is a nighttime person. She sleeps in the way that you sleep. And that just might be your rhythm. So I'm not sure. I don't know, Stephen, do you have anything to say about that? But uh, if you are, I was not an owl. I'm a lark. So early morning is best for me. So it was extremely difficult. And I wish I had known Stephen back then because I know this would have helped me. Yeah. So, I mean, again, this is why I was saying at the beginning that everybody's, uh, there's no optimal sleep. There's no one way to do this. It's just trying different things. And I'm trying to just cut down your learning approaches. Cause I've tried, I have like 10 or 15 special pillows. That cost me like a thousand dollars worth of stupid pillows. And I bought really expensive mattresses, didn't do shit. Um, uh, lots of things out there that just didn't work. And I try to save people some time. So one of those things is don't fight the natural rhythm, like you said, some people are naturally morning people. Some people are naturally night owls. Um, shift work is without a doubt guaranteed to cause you chronic health problems. So you do need to find a way to get to bed, probably, hopefully before 2 a.m. Um, before 1 a.m. would be even better. Uh, if you're staying up in that middle of the night, that 3 to 6 a.m. window, um, you're almost guaranteed extra chronic health problems because that's full on shift work. Uh, so if you're really struggling to reset your circadian rhythm, uh, a few things that I feel like are over, often overlooked is total time outside without sunglasses, contacts, or glasses. So if you're blind as a bat, go find a chair, sit down in that chair, take your stuff off and let the natural light into your eye. Your, you, it resets your, I think it's super, I can't even say it. it's SCN. It, it's basically in your brain. It helps reset your, uh, your clock in your brain. And so a lot of people who have sleep issues with uh, shift work don't spend an hour outside every day. And if you could spend an hour outside every day without sunglasses, contacts, or glasses, no glass between you and the outside light, that's going to be extremely helpful for telling your brain what's going on in the world. If you can see sunrise and sunset, or just sunset, like just watch the sunset. That's one way to do it. Like every day I commit to watching the sunset. Um, that's a great way to get a half hour of that non-interrupted sleep time. And also helps it, it, those wavelengths help tell your brain it's, it's time to wind down. The other thing for people I feel uh, who struggle with, with shift work and resetting their circadian or people who struggle to get to bed is they're not exercising enough. If you go out there and you blast 40 to 60 minutes of exercise, like really work at it, every day, um, your body is typically a lot more ready and willing to just shut down and go to bed. I know it's kind of brutish and you know, a lot of people are like, I don't have the energy for that. Fine. Start with a 60 minute walk every day, hopefully without those sunglasses on. Um, but a lot of people are, are also not moving enough. And I don't know if you have any animals, but like my dogs, are infinitely better behaved if we just go for one walk a day and they're way well behaved if we go for two walks per day. There's just a, something about moving the, the animal parts of us and, yeah. and moving through that energy that can be very helpful for sleep. Uh, okay, that was the little ding-a-ling on my computer to say I have to wrap it up. Um, and okay, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you, Stephen. Please join us. Clarissa, can you pop the link in there for the discount? Um, Carrie says, I love that, Steve. Um, the Preston, the link is going to be popped into the chat in just a second. And um, there it is. Don't forget to use that code SIBOSOS. Stephen, thank you so much.
Yeah, thank you. I mean, I, I'm happy to go deeper on this. Um, sometimes people are not interested in to, to sleep. Some people, you know, sometimes the the life cycle of health, people are very interested. This is just something that I, I don't think a lot of people pay for, but I'm very passionate about because I struggled so much. And I know that if you have a bad day of sleep, it doesn't matter what you do. You're going to have poor insulin control. You're going to have poor gut health and it sucks. And so, um, you know, feel free to reach out to our, our team, support a healthy gut. Um, try the bundle that comes with the guarantee. I got you if it doesn't work. I know it's not going to work for everybody, but it will work for most people. Um, and uh, we can definitely do another sleep show if if this was you know that that yeah. needed and that helpful. Yeah, and we will send out the replay. So um, check it out, and we'll have all the coupon information and the links as well. All right, thanks, Lena. Thanks, Nia and Michael and the gang all here and Carrie and just hundreds of you here. So I really appreciate it. We've got more in store as the summer in the U.S. or East uh, or our hemisphere proceeds. So be sure to open up those emails. And thank you so much. All right. All right.